Hi, my name is Will, and I've been in software development for several decades now. I started when I was a kid, and I wanted to make a video game on my Apple IIc. I wrote in BASIC, then later on when I switched to the Mac, I was writing things in Pascal and C and C++. Over time, I wound up pivoting my career to Enterprise Java, which is sort of this funny thing because I got started wanting to make video games, and I literally wound up making insurance software. About five, six years ago, I had the opportunity to go ahead and pursue my own thing after um, doing consulting for a long time. I took about a year to get deep into building video games. I did. I shipped my dream game, a giant action sci-fi RPG game called Blaze Sky, which you can get up on Steam right now. In fact, you should do that. You should go to Steam. Go buy my game. Anyway, the point of this uh, video is to talk to you a little bit about whether or not you should make a video game or not, and what the pros and cons are, and share some of my advice. First off, should you make a game? Pros and cons. If you want to make a video game as a hobby project, it's a no-brainer. You should just do it. It's super fun. You can learn a lot in the process. You learn about how video cards work, if you've ever wondered what shaders are, all that fun stuff. If you actually get to the point where you ship something, you've learned a lot because now you've been able to successfully build a software product, release it, and then get money for it. That is kind of the dream, right? Except there's the trick. If you want to make money, the video game industry, as we all know, is really swamped right now. You have this challenge. Pay rates for software engineers in the gaming space are quite a bit lower than they are typically for enterprise. If you do make a video game and ship it, it's very, very challenging to make money. I wound up making this game for a year and it basically worked out to a little better than minimum wage if I add up all the hours worked and the investment um, in return. I'm still glad I did it because it was a huge bucket list thing for me personally to do it, but it wasn't the sort of thing that was going to make me big amounts of cash. With that in mind, the part that's kind of strange is there are indie developers who put out a video game and it makes seven figure money. But there's this tension here because on the one hand you can put a ton of time in and have no returns or you might get really lucky i've watched interviews with people like the guys who did slay the spire which is this really popular indie game and in the interviews they basically say they don't actually know why the game became popular it's definitely better returns than buying a lottery ticket but in a lot of ways feels more like trying to make a movie in hollywood and maybe it's successful and maybe it's not let's say that you do want to make a game well, what do you use the good news is, is that most of the game to development tools nowadays are free. The most popular ones are Godot, Unity, Unreal. They all have free tiers. More generally, if you already know a programming language, I would just say pick a, lang a game engine that works with the programming language that you like. But there's game engines for Python. There's game engines for Rust. When you're just getting started, maybe that's the easiest way to do it. The indie developer, small developer type projects, the two go-tos are going to be Godot and Unity. And I would slightly lean towards Godot at this point. It's a lot faster, it's lighter weight, I think it's a little easier to use, but your mileage may vary. One of the things that's a little bit counterintuitive about this is that when you start working with a game engine, I would actually recommend spending as long as you can before you start getting into the coding side. Because the whole point of the engines is really the editors and the visual tools that let you do things fast. It sounds really cool to do everything in code, but all the visual effects and game development is a visual media. All of that stuff, you're going to want to use visual tools to lay that out. Maybe you want to do particle effects. Maybe you want to do tile maps. Maybe you want to do 3D models and animation. All that stuff is about the editors and the engines, not actually the coding side. The first project I would recommend that most people do is something like a little physics ball game, like a little pachinko thing or a, or a marble maze or something like that. And the idea is, is that you just want to get used to how do you add in assets? How do you make the physics work with them? What happens when you hit play and then how do you, you know, freeze the game and try things out? How do you add a UI controls? How does animations work? All that kind of stuff is all critical to learn. If you try to just approach everything from coding first, what'll happen is, is you'll wind up reinventing the wheel. You start with the visual tools first and then add in the coding. One of the things that's kind of neat is, is most of these, the UI that you're seeing while you're building this stuff is actually just built from reflection from the code underneath anyways. So the more you work with the editor UI, the more you're going to end up implicitly learning what the APIs and the tools will end up looking like. After you've done your first little physics ball drop games, stuff like that, 
I would recommend starting out by recreating Atari classics. Asteroids, Adventure, ET, Missile Command, whatever it is, recreate them, but then try to make them really pretty. Maybe put in new art assets, add sound effects, something that's your own unique spin. Maybe it's something kind of inspired by Adventure, but it has its own little cool twist on it. The reason is because you're going to start learning all these things that are magic constant numbers. Let's just take probably one of the most famous video game openings of all time, which is the Mario platformer level. You could probably hear the music in your head while I'm talking about it. Just that one, one Mario level. Take the Mario character. How fast does he move left or right? How high does he jump when you press the jump button? How far does he come down? There are dozens of variables that are driving all these little tiny things just to get the character to move across the screen. If you've never done video game development before, it can be hard to realize just how much stuff is going on underneath the covers because when you play the game, it just works, right? That's why you want to start by taking these little simple things and then learning all the pieces underneath first before you get too crazy. And that, of course, relates directly to the big one, which is everybody wants to make a big RPG. That's a really common thing. The worst case you want to do, I want to make a multiplayer RPG or something like that. Obviously, that's super complicated. You've got all the networking sides. And you don't want to throw that in on top of everything else that you learn. We've touched on a lot of systems already. Animation, sound effect, 3D models. How do you switch between levels? All that kind of stuff. If you're building an RPG, you're taking all of that and taking it to 11. There's actually a couple of other reasons not to do some sort of huge RPG. One of those is that you'll wind up playing the first starting part of your game over and over again. And this is why something like a roguelike or a strategy game is actually more fun. On my game, I couldn't tell you how many times I played that first few opening levels. Frankly, I got really sick of them at some point. And that's part of the work, but if I had been building something like Civ, a strategy game, I would still be having fun starting up and playing through the game years later, right? But I know the story. I know what's going to happen in the RPG. One other thing that makes RPGs really hard is player difficulty and, and play balance. When you do a big giant game and there's so many routes through it, it's almost impossible to get the player difficulty right. All of the guts of my game, I wrote unit test for. That's how I do the, the quest system and monster spawning and all that stuff was going to be work and be solid even with this big giant thing that I was building. I was very proud of the fact that I got a really solid quest system and all these underlying headless systems underneath. The problem is I can't write a unit test that says, is this game fun? I can't write a test case that says, is it pretty either? I did talk to somebody at Google who said that they were doing game development work and that they literally could do a split test with a fraction of people to see if their engagement numbers went up. But for most developers, that's not how it works. And that's where if you have a smaller game, a roguelike or a strategy game, that's going to be easier to build. That gets to the next piece, which is, so you've got this game, maybe you're working on it, you've got an idea, how are you going to market it? How are you going to get it out? But nowadays, it's basically all online, and really it's almost all streamer-based. Game developers talk a lot about how they don't get a lot of traction with any of the tra traditional press or media. It's almost impossible to make ad revenue where anything that's pay-per-click to work or something like that, it just the math doesn't work, to work out. The one package that I found helpful was Keymailer. What you do is you set up your game on Steam, and then you can sign up with Keymailer, and then you can distribute your Steam keys to streamers acknowledging that streamers are what's driving everything may affect the kinds of games that you want to make. My game, I have this big action RPG, but it's got a strong story. And every time I'd watch a streamer play it and they would get to any of the story elements, you could just hear the streamer not wanting to play because the streamer wants to talk while they're showing their audience something. And a single player RPG was like the worst possible thing to do. And that's where you start to get into things like, are you doing a uh, roguelike? Is there a chaos generator? One of the reasons why I think uh, Minecraft is still so popular is because effectively you combine mods with chaos and there's just stuff that streamers can do forever. Part of the challenge is how do you come up with a game title or something that's new enough to be interesting but not so crazy it just confuses everybody. That unique spin part is the tricky part, right? Maybe you do something that's more web-centric or maybe you do something that's built on top of LLMs or something. Depends, right? What do you want to do? What do you want to sign up for? It's an interesting thing. One other piece of advice on mobile and console. Do you care or worry about putting out your game on mobile or console? And I would say for most developers, I wouldn't even think about it. I would just start with PC and Mac, maybe do Linux for, for uh, Steam Decks and stuff like that, but that's it. Don't try to do mobile and try to do console until you've got many, many copies of your game already sold.
If you do get to the point where there's enough popularity and interest, then talk to somebody who does things like porting and it'll be straightforward. Just as a intermediate, make sure that your game can be played with a regular gamepad. I think we've covered a lot. We've talked about what you could build, how you might want to build it, what tools you might want to use, some of the marketing aspects. This is obviously a huge topic. But I think that as we're all sort of sitting here trying to think about how do we do side projects, why are you even making software, there's all these kind of interesting conversations to be had about this stuff. I hope this was interesting for you. I did a whole huge game in Unity a while ago, and if there's something about that that you're curious about, I did do some videos earlier about using Unity as a enterprise developer, and maybe I should do another video like that where you know, it's Godot, but for seasoned developers or something. If any of this stuff sounds interesting, let me know in the comments and all the usual things. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and ring the bell and all that fun stuff. I just really enjoy reading everybody's comments. Thank you so much. Good luck and take care.